you can be 30, but your soul may be stuck at the age of 12 because of some incident that hasn't been resolved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then those traumas, you can't, it's the, it's the ones that you don't even know about. I mean, I, I think about my own life growing up in Cleveland in the hood. Uh, we we had Debo from Friday in our neighborhood. Like it was, <laughs> you know, we had our version uh, like on Friday. And there was so much stuff that went on in the neighborhood that we just thought was normal. Receiving a diagnosis is only to help. It's only to help provide your child or in adults also are being diagnosed um, to help clients be able to learn social skills, to be able to learn emotional regulation skills, or just connection and relationship development. Um, I always tell people that people on the spectrum are amazing. It's not something to be afraid of. Go to therapy, you know, talk about what that trauma was. And aside from that, talk about how it does impact you. And think about how does it impact the the people that you're in relationships with. Because until you do that, sometimes you don't know how it affects you or the other people. And when you don't know how it affects you, it's hard to see how it affects anybody else around you. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. I have a special guest with me today. Today's guest is a licensed professional counselor. She also has a doctorate of psychology and her goal as a therapist is to help you develop a creative plan to learn and implement coping skills to overcome struggles such as anxiety, stress, depression, grief, anger, anger, work or school issues, relationship issues, trauma, parenting, behavioral issues and marital issues, including divorce. This is why I have her on the show today, (laughs) and she's a lover of music. I want to talk about that as well. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Dr. Aranisha Johnson. How are you doing this evening? Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you, and I'm just looking forward to having a great conversation. Thank you again for inviting me. No problem. We've been following each other on Twitter for a while, or X, whatever you want to call it, and uh, I had to... You know, going to inbox and was like, hey, we got to make this work. I need her on the show. <laughs> Today, we're going to discuss wellness, wisdom, integrating therapy into your everyday life. We want to make this as practical as possible because you never know what people are dealing with. Uh, first of all, who inspired you to become the woman you are today? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I definitely would say my mom and my grandmother. Mm-hmm. Um My grandmother actually just passed on November the 5th. So Mm -hmm. that question makes me a little bit of a little bit of, um, I guess, emotional right now. But um, definitely my mom and grandmother just being able to witness um, and experience their love, their their strength and their wisdom. So I have to say them as well as, of course, the most high God as well. So. um, So, yes, definitely them. Mm, That's awesome. Well. Yeah, that's that's beautiful because I like to ask because you can see the accolades and you can see, you know, the Googling your name and, and, and things of that nature. And I just like to see where does that inspiration comes from? Are there uh, specific therapeutic techniques or modalities you find particularly effective? So I definitely take the approach of doing what fits the client. Of course, I can't. I can't use the same techniques with every client just because everybody's different. So mm-hmm. I really do try and take a unique approach for everyone according to their needs. Mm-hmm. But if I had to say the foundation of my particular approach, I would have to say cognitive behavior therapy mm-hmm. um, is the number one foundation because I really do believe that our thoughts, our behaviors, and our feelings all work together. Mm-hmm. I don't think that we can separate the three. (laughs) So I strongly believe in that. So oftentimes the foundation of my approach is to help clients really get into their heads and figure out what are you thinking? You know, where did that come from? Where, where did this thought originate? Because usually that helps us really figure out and 
it helps us to cope and maybe even resolve some of the emotions or maybe even negative behaviors they may have. So are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, Go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. For me, cognitive behavior therapy, as well as solution-focused brief therapy, um, I like to find solutions. Um, as a therapist, of course, I like to process. I like to help people process. But the goal is to find, just find a solution or find a healthy way to cope with whatever may be happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I like when you talked about getting inside the head, you know, getting the thoughts. Because um, <laughs> once you get up here and you're trying to separate your thoughts and where did that come from? Why am I thinking like this? And it takes work to try to get your mind in order and to stay focused. Uh, it just takes so much work because you can talk negative to yourself and you're wondering where does that negative talk comes from? Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. I talk to my clients all day mm -hmm. about negative self-talk because the thing is our negative self-talk usually comes from some type of irrational place. Um, and it usually comes from some type of self-limiting belief that started years and years ago. And we don't realize that it's self-limiting because it lives in our head. So we think it's true. We think we have all the evidence saying that this particular belief is true, but it's really not. So I think that negative self-talk, that is at the core of most people's anxiety, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree because um, I know I have those negative self-talk sometimes and uh, imposter syndrome and all that stuff. You oh, know? Yeah. It's sure. like, uh, let me start from square one. Let me. <laughs> Let me really yeah, back. figure out where's where's it coming from, and usually we realize it's not even true. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not even true. Hey, and I heard someone say uh, the way you talk to yourself in your head, you wouldn't let somebody else talk to you like that if it was them. That's that's true because when you think about it. Most of us say worse things to ourselves than we would ever say to the people who love us mm -hmm. or that we love. We mm -hmm. wouldn't dare allow the people we love to even speak of themselves that way, but we do it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's really fascinating. Yeah. How do you know when your clients are healing? Like, How do you know when the wheel starts to turn like is is there any kind of way that you know things are starting to to work out like uh can you help us with that i i love that question because that's my favorite part mm -hmm. of being a therapist mm -hmm. um just being able to witness a client's growth in their self-healing and i say self-healing because they're doing the work i'm mm -hmm. of course facilitating but it's their journey mm -hmm. um just seeing them grow and evolve through so many of the issues that they may have experienced. And I think the number one thing for me in knowing that, okay, you're, you're on the right path is watching them gain insight, watching them gain 
you know, self-awareness and just being empowered. You know, I love when clients come in and they're like, oh, I know what you're about to say. And they'll say, you know, <laughs> they'll tell me, you know, I had this moment yesterday, I was driving and, you know, I came to this realization or I had this revelation. And when I start seeing that they're excited about what they're learning and they're excited to actually use the tools that they're learning in therapy and they can come back and tell me, you know, yesterday I was able to be assertive or, you know, I was able to speak to someone that I haven't spoken to in a long time and I was able to tell them how I feel. So just seeing them actually practice what we're talking about in therapy, outside of therapy, to me, that's the best feeling in the world. And that lets me know that they're they're actually getting it and they're using the tools and they're becoming healthier people because of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The same. I, I get sometimes I could be driving or I could be at work, anything. And I just, just revelation. I'm just like, Oh, now I see why I act like that. Uh huh. Oh, you know, and, and, and half of the time I'm apologizing to my wife. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, sorry. I'm sure she appreciates that. You know, she appreciates that self-awareness, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry for being a butthead. I, I, I did not know. It's just like reflex. It's like your default setting. And then you yeah. realize where you're going wrong. Uh-huh. You know, um, and I see why the divorce rates are higher the second time around, because very few people have the uh, self-awareness to uh -huh. be like, oh, this is where I'm messing up at. A lot of times they think it's someone else's issue, but it's actually you. Uh -huh. And I, I love your content. I've been following you for years and I absolutely love just the content that you put out and helping people to understand. And I don't know if you realize this, but you're doing a lot of therapeutic work as far as helping people to be self-aware. I see some of the content, the questions that you post on Twitter or mm -hmm. X um, <laughs> and it gets people thinking. And sometimes I sit and read the comments, you know, <laughs> I read the comments of what people say back and it's, it's amazing. And you're right. A lot of people after divorce or, you know, just after any relationship ending, whether it's with a friend or, you know, significant other, um, they're not always looking at the lessons. They're not, they're not always looking at you know, what could I have done differently or what can I take from this past relationship and change going into a new relationship? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, yeah. The whole Twitter thing. I mean, I love X. Uh, sometimes people come for me and I, I it's, it's all good. Uh, yeah. I, and, and I combat that a lot of times and I had to learn this for myself to not get so caught up in what people say, uh, it, positive or negative. I try to stay kind of in the middle uh -huh, uh -huh. and I realize that more people are willing to open up to you if you don't be combative or oh, defensive sure. oh yes that's and, so true yeah so I will say people say something negative and I'll just thanks for commenting you know yeah. and then they'll <laughs> inbox me and be like hey I got a question <laughs> you know? Or they'll respond and be like, yeah, it's all good. I was just joking. I'm glad you can take a joke. I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what advice do you have for the person whose childhood trauma affects every romantic relationship they're in? Wow. It's amazing that you just asked me this. I literally just had a conversation about this earlier today. <laughs> really? Um, <laughs> so that's alignment for sure. So I would say... Take your trauma and number one, and I know it's cliche because I'm a therapist, but <laughs> honestly, I say go to therapy mm -hmm. to talk about that trauma. A lot of us have experienced trauma and we don't know that it's trauma. We actually don't know. We don't classify it as trauma. And sometimes it takes saying things out loud and talking about it to realize, wait a second, that was a lot. You know, I didn't I didn't realize that was a lot. Or you need another person to say, whoa, you know, you you experienced a lot there. So I think number one would be go to therapy, mm -hmm. you know, talk about 
what that trauma was. And aside from that, talk about how it does impact you and think about how does it impact the, the people that you're in relationships with? Because until you do that, sometimes you don't know how it affects you or the other people. And when you don't know how it affects you, it's hard to see how it affects anybody else around you. So I think talking about it and not only talking about it, but understanding that all of the traumatic things have that have happened, there are things that you can do. And I won't say this for every traumatic incident, but most of them, we can sit back and we can think about what those traumatic things either taught us or we can look at it in a way of figuring out well, what can I do to not allow this traumatic incident or this particular thing. And it all depends on what it is, but you have to figure out, okay, how can I take that and not give it the power to have a negative influence on other areas of my life? So mm -hmm. one, identify what those traumas are. Two, figure out how it actually impacts you. And then three, figure out how can you go forward in terms of not allowing it to have complete control over your future. Because mm -hmm. I think ultimately when we don't know and we don't call something out or we're not able to actually identify the effects of it, mm -hmm. we give it power. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Because... And I want to ask this, what is, this isn't even in my notes. So I, as I'm listening to you, I'm just like, I got to ask him this. <laughs> What's, is there a difference between childhood trauma and um, inner child wounds? Like, are they the same or is there, is there a difference or are they kind of similar? Are they kind of like cousins or? I consider them to be one and the same. Okay. Because, and this is a really good question. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking and processing it mm -hmm. because I think the inner child wounds come from that childhood trauma. Okay. I think the trauma that a person experiences can cause those inner child wounds. And, and those are those wounds that you carry that you don't always know are there. Or you, you try and hide them. You try and stuff them down. And usually those wounds, whether it's, you know, um, from a negative relationship with the parents or some type of sexual abuse or any type of abuse, mental, or physical abuse, um, being abandoned, whatever those things may be, they cause those inner child wounds. And usually, usually that's what people are fighting against as adults. You know, they're fighting against those things. So I would say that they're they're intertwined together. Okay. Yeah, because because I heard uh, I forget some of them, one of them popular psychologists or something, and they said how you might physically grow, but once you get hit with the trauma, it like stunts your your. It stunts your growth. Yeah, yeah, like your like it stunts your soul or something like that. And I was just. I thought it was interesting because it was like, yeah, because you can be arguing with your spouse, y'all falling out, but you're really arguing with the 12 year old version of him. I saw, I actually saw that. I saw it on uh, TikTok. I okay. can't remember who the person was, but it was on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, oh, I think it's like Ayana Van Zandt. Was it her? I think I, it was her. I, and I can, that sounds like something that she would cover. <laughs> But yeah. it was another, it was some type of interview that someone was doing um, and the person, at least, and we may be talking about two different videos, mm -hmm. but the one that I saw, they talked about, you can be 30, but your soul may be stuck mm -hmm. at the age of 12 because of some incident that hasn't been resolved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then those traumas, you can't, it's the, it's the ones that you don't even know about. I mean, I, I think about my own life. Growing up in Cleveland in the hood, uh, we we had Debo from Friday in our neighborhood. Like it was, <laughs> you know, we had our version uh, like on Friday. And there was so much stuff that went on in the neighborhood that we just thought was normal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, that affected me or the way I was raised as a kid. I just thought that's just the way things went. Yeah, that's, a, that's like that for everybody. Right. You know, that's mm -hmm. just 
you you know the world that you live in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, switch gears just a little bit because I noticed that you uh, maybe have some you deal with uh, clients that d deal with autism. That yes. Yeah. Now, um, if you don't know, I have two. My my two baby boys have autism. I think I, I did read that one time. I think you made a post. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So my two youngest ones. Um, they have it. And this is a this is new to me. I'm just like, where does this come from? You know, uh, so I want to ask about autism. Do you find that most parents do they get their children evaluated? Is is that do do they because from what I've seen. Some people almost are in fear to get okay. them evaluated. Yes. I would say over the last maybe three years, I've had more parents to actually come in and say, I need my child tested for autism, you know, whether it's the teacher saw some things or, you know, hey, I read about this. But prior to that, I'm from Mississippi and the kids, parents are now coming in more and they're asking for their children to be tested, whether it's because a teacher saw some signs or the parents themselves had some questions and they've been doing research. I'll say prior to about three years ago, I would tell parents, you know, hey, this is something that I'm seeing and I think it would be a great idea to get tested and Oh, my goodness. Some of them would be highly upset. And I would have to explain to them, this is not something to be afraid of. You know, receiving a diagnosis is only to help. It's only to help provide your child or in adults also are being diagnosed um, to help clients be able to learn social skills, to be able to learn emotional regulation skills, or just connection and relationship development. Um, I always tell people that people on the spectrum are amazing. It's not something to be afraid of. I'm not, and I don't want to discount um, some of the services or just the things that people have to adapt to, to help you know, their children or their loved ones who are on the spectrum, but it's not something to be afraid of. You know, I, I enjoy working with the population because these are some of the brightest people in the world. These are some of the most gentle, um, gentle spirits. And I'm happy to know that there are more people that are coming out and saying, you know, my child is on the spectrum or my brother or my sister, because it lets people know that it's okay. It's okay. And if you're noticing signs or symptoms, it's okay to go and get tested, at least for the purpose of figuring out what services can your loved one receive that will make things better. So I, I'm happy to know that people like you are sharing, you know, your story about your family and, and I love seeing people make posts. You know, I always tell people social media, it can be a downfall sometimes, but it's also a tool for people to know, hey, you're not alone. You know, you're not alone. And I experienced this or if I don't, I know someone who does experience it. So I think spreading awareness is helping more and more people. They're, accept, they're accepting of it. You know, they can come in and say, hey, I think this is going on. You know, what can we do to get my child tested? You know, I need to figure out what do I need to do as a parent? You know, I need to know what does the school need to do? So I'm really loving the fact that people are more aware. Because to be honest, before I became a therapist, I didn't know a whole lot about autism. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually my supervisor who came to me when I worked in Mississippi and said, hey, um, are you, I know you love kids, you know, are you interested in learning more about autism? And I said, sure. And I went off to a training in Missouri, um, learned a lot of information and it's still something that I'm passionate about as far as just making sure that I'm doing research and that I'm figuring out the best tools and tips to help. Because again, there aren't a lot of providers that are educated or that are 
um, dedicated to working with the population. So I, I'm i glad that my supervisor came to me and asked me to, to learn more because it definitely is one of my highlights of my career. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I, I'm learning as I go as well. I'm reading a book on autism now and um, I'm even working on a script. I'm, I think I'm going to take the, the, the TV show route, um, writing something and, uh, but I we'll can't wait to that. see it. Yeah, we'll talk yeah, about I that can't later. Wait to see it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be really good. Um, yeah, I'll say that for another time. Okay. okay. <laughs> this, this, this is the bonus round. So there's no wrong question. I mean, no okay. wrong answer. Okay. This is just Dr. Johnson uncut, you know? Okay. 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 <laughs> so let's do it. All right. What is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? Ooh. Not speaking up. Not speaking up and assuming things. Mm. Want to expound I think, on that? I think maybe? communication, not being open about how they truly feel mm. um, just to appease their spouse. Mm. Mm. and that's just off the top of my head <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we yeah if you want to double back that's all good oh, you know what I'm thinking? Uh, yeah there's no wrong answer no i get it because communication can be a, a issue uh mm -hmm. shoot, especially for men i know i struggle with it sometimes from seeing your parents relationship what did it teach you about marriage Ooh, that's a great question um, my parents, they're really gentle with each other. Um, they're very loving. It's obvious, you know, even as a child, but especially as an adult, just seeing that they genuinely like each other as people. And I know that sounds so simplistic, <laughs> mm -hmm. but they're very gentle with each other and, I love the way even when I was younger, I would just hear them sometimes just talk, you know, just talk about things, um, of course. And I'm sure they had their disagreements, but they never, if they did, it was never to a point where I, I knew that it was in a real issue because they would just talk through things. So I think just seeing them communicate, seeing them really like each other, you know, as people and just being respectful. Um, it just taught me that, you know, relationships, of course they'll work. And I think it's work for everybody. But I think when there's a mutual um, respect, a mutual like, um, a mutual goal of, you know, having the best life possible, I think that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Is being committed to to being a partner in that in that fight of having a good life. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I love it. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Whoa, that's a good one. <laughs> wow. I think it's easier to love someone else. Expound, please. I think it's, it, it sort of goes back to what we talked about earlier about our negative self-talk, mm. you know, about how we wouldn't dare say things to other people, the things that we say to ourselves. So mm. I think it's easier to think that other people are worthy of the things that we don't even give to ourselves sometimes. And of course, I know, um, of course, I know that it can be where a person loves themselves, <laughs> that they love themselves more than other people. But I think overall, it's easier to to love other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I do believe that there was, I had a therapist on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he said there were three, th three things to show people that you love yourself. It was, um, oh, no, let's skip my mind. It was setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Saying, saying no, knowing no is a complete sentence. 
and keeping promises to yourself. Mm, I love that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It was, it was like you build confidence when you follow through on the things you tell yourself. Uh-huh. Yeah, because it shows that you value yourself. You value and you see your worth to be able to, to keep those promises. Yeah, and because sometimes some sometimes people won't even tell you things that they are that they that they need to do because now they're accountable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, nah, I'm gonna keep that to myself. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody has <laughs> to know that's a goal. mm, yeah, I ain't gonna tell them stop eating cookies. <laughs> That that's just between me and me. yeah. <laughs> Last question: <laughs> What is the best part about being you? the best part about being me. Hmm. I would say getting to do. The things that I love, um, being able to to help other people, having the heart to do that, and actually enjoy being able to do something that I I really do enjoy doing, whether that's counseling, um, just whether that's you know doing some of my other favorite things, whether it's listening to music or writing, or just being able to experience life. the way that I get to experience it. I think it's just the best part about me to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah that's right yeah it's, it's, it's about you right <laughs> well dr johnson i want to acknowledge you for uh, what you're doing in the community and being an advocate of mental health um i want to acknowledge you for that and also acknowledge you for just you know sharing your wisdom and your knowledge because i believe this uh podcast this video is going to help someone uh, you just never know who's listening or who's dealing with what and once they hear something it could be life-changing uh, so i want to acknowledge you for those things can you let everyone know how they can get in touch with you Sure. And thank you so much again for, for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, I can be reached. My business page on Instagram is Therapeutic Gym. So that's T-H-E-R-A-P-E-U-T-I-C-G-E-M-S. So it's at Therapeutic Gems. That's my business page on Instagram. Um, my website is currently down, but I'm working on it. It'll be back up soon. So I can be reached there. I can also be reached if you type my name in on Google. Um, my Psychology Today profile will come up. Right now, I am only seeing clients in the state of Georgia. Um, I hope to be able to add Mississippi back to that list to do some virtual sessions. Um, but right now, I am seeing clients in Georgia. I can also be contacted through my business Instagram Or if anyone across the country would like to book me for a psychoeducational workshop, I do workshops on things such as uh, mental health awareness. Um, assertive communication is the favorite. People love that workshop. Um, I also do them on things such as bullying prevention, um, suicide prevention. So I do many different topics that are related to mental health. Oh, and another favorite is self-care. So I do a lot of workshops on that may be my most popular one, actually. Um, so I can be reached in those places and hopefully I'll have my website back up so it'll have more information on there. Mm -hmm. for sure for sure i'll have everything linked up in the description below so anyone wants to connect with you whether through social media or book you or uh anything of those nature uh that nature to be in the description well brave arts community you heard it here If you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you share this with someone. You never know what someone is going through. You can always just send it to send it to your friends in a group chat. You never know. You know, people be dealing with stuff. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. By doing so, it'll put you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free things? This is Sean Heinemann with special guest, Dr. Johnson, and we are out. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content 
and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.